not about war and battle, it's about living in Finland, hard winters, lots of suffering in the Finnish history and the whole nation has held it together and maybe Sisu is the explanation for that. All right, y'all, welcome back to Common Arms channel. Okay, so today we're checking out a pretty freaking interesting video. So this is actually from the Sun's YouTube channel and it's titled, How Finland Will Fight in a War with Russia After the Ukraine Invasion. And I gotta say, this is a pretty freaking interesting topic and I'm glad somebody made like, I mean, it's about 32 minutes long, so I imagine it's, a, it's gonna be a pretty comprehensive video. But yeah, this is a very interesting topic. Actually, having gone to Finland in mid-June, I was able to see there was a, I don't know how the mindset was before, you know, all the Ukraine stuff went down, but I think Finns have always had this sort of idea in the back of their mind that Russia is definitely capable of doing some pretty nasty stuff, especially considering their history with the Winter War and Continuation War. So I think they are definitely of the mindset of being prepared for a sort of conflict like that. But with everything that went down with Ukraine, I think that has just like tripled from what we've seen beforehand, if not more, because yeah, Finns are definitely taking this seriously. And I'm sure this video is going to be talking about that, but I'm very excited to check it out. Again, it's 32 minutes long, so let's just get right into it. It should be a good one. Sort of like guts. Treat, perseverance, and stubbornness. And of course, we're going to see some familiar faces here. Obviously, if you guys saw the, the meet and greet video, I met Yari from Varos de Leca. And yeah, it looks like he's got a pretty decent talking role, if not more, in this video. So it's going to be cool to get his perspective as well. Even though it seems from the first hour of the war that you are going to lose this battle. No matter how bad it's going. You won't give up in any circumstances. That's the Sisu mindset right it's there. It's not about war and battle. It's about living in Finland. Hard winters, lots of suffering in <laughs> the Finnish history and the whole nation has held it together. And maybe Sisu is the explanation for that. There you go. <laughs> Now, I don't think I ever actually showed this, but I actually got a CC tattoo when I was over in Finland. And I gotta say, I love that mentality. When I, when I first heard about Sisu, I was like, that is really interesting because I've never heard of any other country coming up with a sort of word specifically for this mentality of never giving up, never quitting, never backing down and fighting to the end. And I just think that's so badass, especially from a, an American perspective with the American War of Independence. It's really fighting for this cause, fighting for your livelihood, even sort of a bit of like a national identity. And it's just, it's so badass. Just creating a word for that mentality just goes to say a lot of what the Finns think of maintaining their sort of livelihood and their sort of identity. In the depths of a pine forest an hour's drive from Helsinki, some 100 hmm. Finnish army reservists are gearing up for a day of shooting. Nice gun. It's part hobby and gear. part training and part subtle signal to Finland's potential enemies. The message, think twice. <laughs> Once you go to Helsinki and you go to buy a pack of cigarettes from Arkioski or a grocery store, uh, the, the person selling those cigarettes to you, he knows how to shoot with bazooka. So we are basically almost all male trained and our neighbors know this. Hmm. They are very aware that this country is able to provide 900,000 people with guns to the border in a matter of days or weeks. <laughs> so they know it. I don't know if it was in the winter war or the continuation war, but when I heard Finland gave out firearms to like all of their residents to like hide in their houses, I was like, dang, that's pretty badass. And it's something that we saw with Ukraine actually handing out these firearms to, you know, allow these people to defend themselves and fight for, you know, their home and their family and, and whatnot. And yeah, Finland, they're definitely comfortable with doing something like that, especially since they have the conscripts and, you know, basically everybody's got some sort of appreciation or experience with being in the military. I think nowadays after this uh, Ukraine invasion, people are... People are a bit scared, I would say. That makes, mm. well, makes all these kind of, a, you know, shooting sports, for example. It's, it's kind of a, a, this is a good time to be doing uh, these kind of activities also <laughs> to show that we are having quite a good capabilities and we have very uh, motivated reservists in this country. Yeah, big Yusi deterrent. Naski is a 32-year-old IT strategy consultant. He's also huh. a member of Finland's reservist army um, and a crack shot with his customized AR-15 rifle. Uh, rifle? It looks pretty good. 
Faro uh, Nordic Components AR. Very uh, reliable, good AR rifle. Mm. And uh, I'm also having a, a Leopold scope on it. Nice. Uh, this is a rifle stage. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're shooting this stage with the rifle. Uh, usually people are using a AR rifles, some are. Okay, so we have a Smith & Wesson rifle here, interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure what brands you can really get in Finland. I mean, we got Daniel Defense. So I imagine so far it's looking like pretty much what you can get in the US. I know you need to be like a hobby shooter for like two years to be able to sort of get to this sort of perspective, unless you're a reservist. I'm not exactly sure how it works specifically with reservists, but I know to be like a sporting shooter or like buy and own firearms, you need to be like a hobby shooter for a couple of years. But yeah, I've never actually looked into what sort of firearms you actually have available. I mean, what I'm looking at right now, it looks like pretty much stuff you'd get in the US. Using uh, 7.62 calibers as well, but why mm. most of the rifles are uh, 0.223 ARs. Nice. Like most men in Finland, Yusi has served in the military. It wasn't a choice, but he enjoyed it <laughs> nonetheless. Oh yeah. He's getting some content on we the range have too. A very long tradition and history of conscription. Uh, in Finland, we have uh, had, we have basically always had the conscription. So it is a tradition that goes cross generations. I would say there are hmm. older generations who have done the same, and we also know generations to come will also have the same. And there is uh, very huge importance for uh, all of us that we are able to maintain the sovereignty of, of, of our country. Hmm. That's a good point. It really ties everyone together I was too. Very surprised when I started doing this, how physical it gets. <laughs> you're running, you are getting your body to very strange uh, positions <laughs> and so on. So it is actually, uh, and there is always a time pressure. Yeah, the adrenaline In too. Here we have uh, two vehicle targets that simulate uh, armored personal carriers, which <laughs> are uh, brown cardboard targets about the size of uh, big tires of armored vehicles. So okay. we simulate uh, doing a mobility kill on an armored personal carrier by shooting the tires uh, many times. Okay, I don't know. I mean, I've never been up against mobile infantry. So I imagine if you need to shoot the tires, you're probably going to shoot the tires because you don't really have a whole lot of options at that point, especially if they're this close. But yeah, it's kind of, it seems like a kind of weird drill to perform, but I mean, with Ukraine, we have seen how close it can get. But also when you're fighting a country that has as many armored vehicles as we've been seeing in the Ukraine conflict, then yeah, maybe a drill like this isn't as silly as it might seem. The uh, rightmost shooting position is some kind of a bunker because it has a small uh, viewport uh, from where the competitor can mm. shoot. That looks like fun. It requires a difficult shooting position. Targets are small, about the size of a man's head at uh, hmm. various distances. And it has a contrast between a very easy target, which is the tire of the armored vehicle, and yeah. then uh, a combatant who is uh, taking cover and only uh, the head is visible. Jeez, knocking him down. Geography is a challenge. Uh, for us. We have always been kind of between uh, the East and the West. We, we used to have a very good relation with Russia as well. It was something we were kind of proud of also, that we are able to cooperate. But now after this full-blown war of <laughs> Ukraine, it has made us also to feel very insecure in Finland. And that's why we have received a tremendous amount of new, uh, new people participating in these service organizations and Hell so yeah. on. So I would answer that geography is, it, it poses us some, some challenges <laughs> that perhaps British people, for example, cannot uh, uh, understand as such easily. Unbelievable. Yeah, especially from the American perspective, we're kind of like, you know, the UK in, in a lot of ways, as far as having that sort of buffer zone around us, you know, you have some reactionary gap to all of this. But Finland, yeah, they're literally, you know, they're bordered with Russia. At any point, Russia can just mobilize their troops on the border and start pushing across. There's really not a whole lot of time to react. So I think that's why they're really, really making sure that they're ready for anything at a moment's notice. Because, yeah, of course, we've seen it's definitely possible for this to happen within like a week's time. That was very good. 
Finland is one of the few countries in Europe which still operates a policy of mandatory military service for all men. Conscription mm. means the small Nordic country of just 5.5 million people can muster one of the largest reserve armies in the world. Mm. These citizen soldiers are often members of reservist organizations, which run voluntary training events like this shooting competition. Since Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine, Finns <laughs> have been flocking to attend refresher courses in everything from shooting to anti-tank techniques and basic survival skills. At the beginning That's of this year, our too. club was roughly 1,000 members, and now it's close to 1,450. So That's 450 dang. more. I have talked That's with pretty them, quick. and the honest answer from them is that they join us because of the security issue and the Ukraine. Hmm. Antti Ketunen is chairman of the Vanta Reservists Club. Now a salesman, he did his mandatory service between 1997 and 1998. Since hmm. then, he's made sure to stay battle ready. It's healthy to know that you can shoot the 40 centimeter target up to 500 <laughs> meter. It's a needful skill like That's swimming. True. If you have to drop from the boat, you have, need to know how to swim back to the boat. I wish huh. that everybody know how to shoot. Yeah, honestly, it is really reassuring when you know how to sort of fight and maintain your own. And that's not just with firearms, but even like just hand-to-hand -hand sort of combat. It is really nice to have those sort of reassurances, especially if there is a threat out there where you know you might have to rely on that, you know, to save your life or what have you. It would be a useful skill one day. If you need mm. to shoot, shoot. If you need to talk, talk. Nice kid. It's better to be a samurai in the garden than a garden in the war. Hmm. Nice. <laughs> Defending our country is yep. uh, really like kind right of uh, deep-rooted in our values. It is our duty and also that it, it is totally normal to think about what happens if I need to uh, defend my country. Hmm. Yari Liner is CEO of military and outdoor supply company Varustileka. Hell yeah. Since Putin launched his war in Ukraine, he's seen demand skyrocket in his stores. After the, the attack... I gotta say, this is super trippy. Like, again, watching these videos, and this is kind of how it was when I was actually visiting Varustileka, but like, watching videos and then going there was weird. But after going there and then watching videos, it's even kind of weirder in a way. It's been crazy. Some of the categories like first aid, combat gear, all the field gear, they have grown hundreds of percentages compared to the same period of time last year. So Damn. yeah, it, it kind of exploded. That's awesome. One item which has been kind of really popular like past few months has been the, the basic plate carrier. Uh, yeah, it's pretty essential. The, the west base where you can put the, the protective plates in in, mm. and then have the, the pouches for uh, for a magazine and then on the sides you can attach for example pouches for tourniquet and first aid kit and yeah. radio and so forth. So yeah aside from just the ballistic protection like it, it literally allows you to have your magazines accessible, you can have hydration accessible, you can have a, a radio, you can have a medical kit like he was saying. It allows you to have all this stuff at your disposal in one small package. So if you do need to mobilize, you can just pick up, you know, a couple of things and you're, you'll be good to go for, you know, maybe a, a couple of days at least. So this has been a, a top seller and in conjunction with, uh, oh, with uh, we have sold a lot of, uh, protective plates uh, for nice. with the different uh, protection levels. Hmm. That particular uh, plate one is the, the rating for that, which is the uh, old, uh, the NATO 7.62 caliber. So pretty powerful hmm. uh, uh, bullet would yeah, this that makes sense then. plate. Especially would, with uh, Russia. So and here what they we use. have uh, one example on the mannequin like uh, basic uh, combat clothing, combat boots, load-bearing belt. You could hmm. mount the, the uh, pouches and, and the pistol there. And then basic load-bearing vest, the chest trick, where you can carry few magazines, hmm. maybe the, the first aid kit. Another... And again, people doing this stuff and preparing now and purchasing kit now, they can understand, okay, maybe I don't need this or maybe I can do this to sort of tweak it. They can get that experience now as opposed to 
getting all of this stuff all of a sudden and now they don't have, you know, when they're actually testing their kid out, they are out there doing it for real and relying on it for their life. So now they have a sort of gap. They can sort of get comfortable with their kit and change up what they need to before they really need to rely on it. Like popular item, what we're selling a lot is the, the helmets, uh, mm. protects from uh, shrapnel and uh, handgun projectiles. You can mount the night vision there. You can have your uh, yeah. uh, communications and ear protection. Many of the items, uh, mm. especially in Finland, uh, are used by uh, reservists or active duty soldiers. Even though the government is offering, of course, they are issuing <laughs> you a kit, but yeah. uh, many of the uh, reservists and active duty personnel are upgrading their kit to be more effective in, in their uh, line of duty. Very and understandable. That, that, that's a big part of our our business, uh, hmm. what we do. Yeah, it's awesome. Not all the items are being bought by the Finnish for the Finnish though. Some are being hmm. sent to Ukraine to be used on the front line. Hell yeah. Some are being bought by other Europeans, in particular from people in Sweden and Germany, where <laughs> sales are up 40% on last year. No kidding. It's no news for, at least for a majority of the Finns, that Russia might be aggressive towards their neighboring countries. Mm. I think people have been like, okay, that was a wake up call that maybe now I need to get in a shape and make sure that I have the mm. right gear and I have the right training if something happens. But it's pretty hard to be happy about the, the sales increase due to the, the Russians attack to uh, Ukraine. I'm really mm. angry about it. Ukraine is, is a sovereign country. They, they just want to live their life. They are not bothering Russians or anyone else. So exactly. I, I don't see any justification for that type of violence. And I just hope that uh, the Russian forces would be driven back to Moscow and we could isolate the Russia totally from the uh, world. And maybe they could kind of apply world membership after 2000 years. But yeah, yeah. that's how I feel. I think Finland is really... Yeah, it was definitely eye-opening for most of the world. But yeah, you can imagine with Finland's history and of course where they are geographically speaking, it was probably something that they were able to accept a little bit more than the rest of the world. Because everybody was just like, that was really sort of sudden and really unwarranted. But again, with Finland and their history, they know what Russia, they have a personal experience of what Russia is capable of, especially when you're talking to your you know, grandparents or great grandparents. And they were there actually fighting the Soviets or the Russians back during uh, you know the 1940s. So I think it was a little bit less eye-opening for them. But of course, they're not minimizing that and they're still preparing as they should be. Well uh, prepared and, and the willingness to protect this country is really high. So hmm. I think if there would be a similar kind of a development in, in things, it would be really bad for Russian troops. They will be probably wiped out. Yeah, I mean, look at the Winter War. The key weapon system of the Finnish defense is the uh, willingness uh, to defend our own country. Hmm. If you want peace, you have to prepare for war. I like that. That's their war flag, right? On Helsinki's island military base of Santa Hermina. Why are some doing the fingers and some are kind of like closing their hand? I mean, maybe it's like a religious versus a non-religious thing. I'm not sure. If you guys know, definitely put it down below. A fresh batch of conscripts are taking their oath of allegiance. Hmm. Observing is Jan Makatalo military professor of operational art and tactics at the National Defense University. Huh. This uh, military oath is a very symbolic uh, event. They give their oath promising uh, that they will defend Finland with all the strengths that they have, even if that it ass. requires the ultimate sacrifice, they commit to that. Mm. This conscript army is the backbone of Finland's all-encompassing defense system known as comprehensive security. 
it basically means that in the event of an invasion, the entire Finnish society can be mobilized to resist. This was our experience from the Second World War. Because we are a small country, we are not able to maintain a large number of army in peacetime. We, right. and in the wartime, we have to have a system that all the power, all the forces of us, our society is directed. Uh, so I think something that a lot of people sort of struggle to understand, at least Americans, is you know the, the purpose of a defense forces, like the Finnish defense forces as opposed to and armed forces. You know, you have the US armed forces, which goes out and helps other countries and does, you know, a bunch of stuff, but their role is not necessarily just the defense of the US. You have the National Guard, you know, which is pretty much for that, but the Finnish defense forces doesn't really need to have a massive active military because they're not, you know, actively, of course they have, you know, deployed to contingency operations and, you know, UN operations, but they're not focused on going abroad and doing these things like the US is. Their focus is to have this defense forces to maintain Finland in the event of, you know, war or somebody attacking Finland so they can preserve their identity and preserve their way of life. So that's why they have a big focus on the reserve forces as opposed to an active force. For the defense of Finland. When the Soviet Union collapsed uh, in, in the beginning of 1990s and the Cold War ended, hmm. most of the European countries abolished their large-scale armies. They ended the uh, general conscription service. Hmm. They sold lots of material. For example, Netherlands gave up the whole uh, armored force and we bought it. As a small country, <laughs> we knew that we should have a readiness because we have our historical background being a neighbor with Russia, Soviet right. Union. We can't afford to lose the infrastructure of the large-scale army. We are not able to rebuild it in a short time. That's why we maintained it and we kept the hmm. uh, structure, uh, the backbone intact and now I think it was a very well done decision made by our politicians and, and our top generals back yeah. then. Good call right there. So, what is that structure? Finland's military is made up of a total of 900,000 reservists, mm -hmm. of which 280,000 can be mustered to form a wartime strength. Of that 280,000, only 3% are full-time professional military personnel, mm -hmm. just 23,000 people. Damn. Hmm. On land, Finland has 200 tanks, more than 2,000 armoured vehicles, over 100 self-propelled artillery pieces, and Damn. more than 600 towed artillery weapons. In hmm. the air, the majority of their strength lies in the 50 single-seat FA-18C Hornets. But nice. by 2030, Finland plans to have procured 64 Lockheed F-35 fighter jets in a deal yes, which sir. was sealed in late 2021. Hmm. Most of the Finnish soil is still a forest with thick trees, rocks, difficult terrain mm. for tanks. To yeah, operate. no kidding. And the whole tactics, whole operational art, whole doctrine of, of Finnish defense forces, it's planned according to that, to take advantage of those features of our terrain. Yep, good call right there. If there would be a surprise attack, we have certain readiness forces which are prepared to give the first strike, mm. to hit hard, to hit fast. We have uh, forces which are able to delay uh, the enemy. They are the new uh, local forces that we are uh, recreating and giving more strength to them. The local forces, they, they are like an anvil. And then we ha have operational forces which are like a sledgehammer. Mm. They hit together and the Hopefully the enemy will be between them and we think that that will be the end of the war. The return of war to Europe has led to a major boost to Finland's military budget, with the government promising to increase defence spending oh, by yeah, 2.2 billion euro over the next four years. Putin's onslaught... I wonder what the actual budget was beforehand, because, I mean, two point, was it 2.2 .2 billion? I mean, the US defence budget is insane because yeah you know the u.s and their defense budget but yeah i wonder what the budget actually was for finland compared to what they're actually adding to it because 2.2 billion might not sound a lot but for defense forces i'm sure that's pretty substantial and that's going to go to help get some pretty solid gear 
to get them prepared, you know, if worse comes to worse. It's also led to one of the most significant U-turns in recent Finnish history, reversing decades of military non-alignment in a country hmm. sat slap back True. between East and West. I warmly welcome the requests by hmm. Finland and Sweden to join NATO. NATO, oh, yeah. or the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, is a defensive pact signed in the aftermath of World War II between an initial 12 countries. In this treaty, we seek to establish freedom from aggression and from the use of force in the North Atlantic community. Over the intervening decades, the alliance has swelled to include 30 nations stretching from the U.S. Alaskan coast to Turkey in the east. The critical component to the alliance is Article 5, which states that an armed attack against one or more NATO countries shall be considered an attack against them all. That means it's a, a lot, security too. guarantee that up until now, a majority of the Finnish people were opposed to. But mm. Russia's actions have flipped public opinion on its head. If a neighbor of Russia, Ukraine, had an even larger army than Finland had, and they are brother nations, Russians and Ukrainians, if, if Russia uh, is able and willing mm. to attack Ukraine, perhaps we have to rethink the whole picture again. A very good point. In addition to the disaster that Russia has now in Ukraine, the actions of Finland and Sweden has, had been the second loss of Russia. They hmm. didn't expect us to act like this. So sure. I think our president said it very well. In his speech, he said that you, you caused. caused this. Damn. You got the mirror. That's badass. The benefits of membership for Finland <laughs> are obvious. But what will NATO gain from its newest applicant? Hmm. They will not get a country which is expecting all the help. We are able to defend ourselves. I think we have those kind of qualities that not so many NATO countries uh, hmm. right now have a large reserve, joint fire ability, air-to-ground capabilities, long-range RT. Whose CH-53 is that? I mean, I've not seen the Finnish Defense Forces with the CH-53 before, but I mean, I know the Marines do training in Finland, so maybe this is a US CH-53, but I don't know. Maybe you guys do use it. Let me know down in the comment section if the Finnish Defense Forces uses these things. Hillary and uh, rocket fire systems, we are able to defend our country even by ourselves. This is sort of additional assurance. I think mm. our capabilities, they will increase peace in, in Scandinavia and in, in the northern flank of NATO. Yeah, I definitely agree. Just inside the Arctic Circle is Western Europe's largest military training area. Here, amongst 1,200 square kilometers of Lapland forest, I'm about to witness proof of that sentiment. Hell yeah, let's see it. Time for the high part of the video. I mean, it's all pretty hype, not gonna lie, when you think about, you know, what it actually means. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Nice. These 48 ton South Korean manufactured K9 Thunder howitzers can launch a 150 millimeter caliber projectile up to 40 kilometers at maximum range. Those things are freaking nice. When that nice. payload lands, it's capable of destroying an area between 50 and 100 meters wide. Each of these yep. tanks is crewed by round. five soldiers. For all but one, their attendance is mandatory. The only mm. person here purely out of choice is 21 year old Sophie Hagman. I think it's really important that everyone should defend our country in their own way. And I wanted to do it in a military service. Women can volunteer to serve yeah. if they're between the ages of 18 and 29. And since 1995, more than 10,000 Finnish women have done just that. Hmm. I want to defend my country in, my, in the military service. And my father is a peacekeeper. So. Is that like an official role or title you can get for like serving in the Finnish Defense Forces or something? The Amos Mordor system is a Finnish made system and the vehicle has two so cool. 120 millimeter mortar tubes on the, on the turret. 
we so have cool. five uh, five salvos, so ten grenades from this position. Hmm. The AMOS or Advanced Mortar System is crewed by a team of four and has a maximum range of ten kilometers. Okay, I need to react to this thing for sure. It just These looks so cool. These may just be exercises, but for the conscripts, the real-world unpredictability to the east is hard to ignore. Our neighbor. So, I saw he had a pistol. How many people in the Finnish Defense Forces actually get pistols? I'm sure if you're in like a, a special role, especially a sort of special operations, you'll probably have a sidearm available for you. But yeah, who can actually, you know, get issued or carry a, a firearm or it's sidearm? Threat sometimes and can be unpredictable. You never know what's going to happen where, the, where we are located. It's, well, you know, you see where the world is right now. So. Of course, the current mm. situation in the world, the war hasn't been quite closer in many years. Sometimes I think think about it, but I try to not think about it too much. Mm. I stress myself out. I think it's important it's that everyone carries their duty. And uh, we are here to defend our land as best as we can. Hell yeah. As an American, I, I can really appreciate that. Before the situation in Ukraine, really thought that a large-scale war like that would ever happen again. But now it's made you realize that it is still possible that we might have to actually use these weapons at some point. Of course, we all hope we don't have to, but it, it makes you think. He almost sounds American. The job I, I would gladly do for my country, if need be. And I'd be prepared We're to British as well. Of course, I'm not saying that I wouldn't be scared. Of course I would, but I'm prepared that if I need to, I'm ready. Oh yeah. Well said. Interesting music. Finland's generally anxious approach to national security isn't without historical justification. It runs deep in our gene pool, the so memory cool. of World War II, because I think Finland lost something like 90,000 soldiers. So mm -hmm. it's still very alive, alive among the Finnish people. It runs deep in our, our collective memory. In November 1939, around a million troops of the Soviet Union's Red Army crossed into Finnish territory. Damn, I didn't know it was what a is known as the Winter War. Hmm. Right over there, you can see a, a Finnish border soldier from the Winter War. He's wearing a captured Soviet light machine gun as his personal weapon. <laughs> and he's also wearing on his belt a famous Molotov cocktail, the improvised anti-tank defense device. Despite being vastly outnumbered, hmm. the Finnish forces managed to stave off the Soviets for three months and inflicted devastating losses on the invading Russians. For real. But eventually, the Soviet Union's overwhelming manpower crushed the resistance and the 1940 Moscow Treaty was signed, which ceded some 10% of Finnish territory to Stalin. Hmm. Exactly the same scenario is going on over there in the Ukraine, which uh, happened here over 80 years ago. Yeah, so the whole true. population uh, was mobilized here, and, and we, we see the very same thing happening in the Ukraine also. Yep, and they're doing a great we job. We always knew that maybe someday the Russian Impressive. bear uh, finds it, its strength again, so it would be crazy or even suicidal to, to put down our defenses. Hmm. That'd be a cool museum to check out. That's the estimated number of nuclear weapons currently in Russia's arsenal. It's the Jesus. biggest stockpile in the world, around 500 more than second place holder, the United States. Since they That's were last used in combat in 1945, the power, precision and strike speed of the world's nuclear weapons has increased mm. dramatically. Russia's intercontinental ballistic missiles are... What's going on with this music? They're making it seem like so lighthearted, like it's like some Christmas movie or something. Fast enough to reach London in 20 minutes and powerful enough to destroy it entirely. And the Russian state mm. isn't shy about threatening to use them. Yep, if there are any sane people left in NATO, they will not approve a peacekeeping operation in Ukraine. Why? Because a collective NATO decision will mean a de facto declaration of war on Russia. 
To win this war, whether we like it or not, we will have to use tactical nuclear weapons in the theatre of operations. Since the war in Ukraine began, a steady stream of nuclear saber rattling from the Kremlin has heightened atomic anxiety in a way not seen since the Cold War. But for Finland, living right next to the world's biggest store of nukes and not a nuclear power itself, the threat of devastation is something the country has faced down for decades. That's why they have underground is, cities. Is one, th one thing that is on our threat assessment. It is most likely not to happen, but it still is a threat. Uh, if the war happens to Finland, the effect to the people are so enormous that we need to take some measures against it. Mm. Buried deep music. into Helsinki's billion-year-old bedrock is a sports centre, car park, kids' playground. Yes, sir. And if the need arises, a 6,000-bed nuclear bunker able to survive an atomic bullseye. The first barrier of, of, the, of the safety is the corridor where you came in. It is descending and it is curving, so it, the corridor itself takes the most of the blast. I'm upset away. I never got and to see this when that, I was there. there is, uh, firstly, uh, the blast-proof barricade, and after Damn. that there is a gas-proof barricade. Any known uh, uh, weapon effects should be on our range, even direct. Hit. I need to get a tour of this next time. The shelter is 25 meters below ground and can be transformed from a leisure center mm. into a life-saving hideaway in 72 hours. So this is the one of the main sheltering halls. All <laughs> these halls are divided in smaller uh, sheltering rooms by uh, light equipment and by light structures hmm. to keep uh, the person uh, to feeling as secure, as secure as possible. So this is one specimen of, of the toilet Must unit. Must still be creepy. And so all the markings on the floor should yeah. uh, contain one, one unit. Yep. It is just a plastic bag. Just a plastic bag. Doesn't need to be anything sexy. Uh, con uh, connected to the uh, ventilation system, so the odors of the toilet <laughs> mostly go out of outside. Mostly, the <laughs> persons they would be a lot. Not gonna be perfect. Odors. Secure, yes. Safe, yes. But mm. comfortable, well, probably not. We don't provide food. We provide air and water and mm. shelter, and that's it. We can survive without air approximately three minutes, and we can survive without water approximately three days, and we can survive without food approximately three weeks. This isn't a mm. hotel. We don't have a breakfast <laughs> buffet. No Netflix, eh? No, sorry, sorry. That's a shame. In I'll Helsinki the alone, there are around <laughs> 5,500 shelters with enough space for 900,000 people, 250,000 mm. more than the population to account for commuters and tourists. The entire country has some 50,000 bomb shelters, most of them private. By law, <laughs> any building in Finland over 1,200 square meters must be built with a shelter, meaning many of them have huh. dual uses. Metro stations, swimming pools, gyms, skate parks, and in the north, in Lapland, even Santa's grotto can be converted into a bomb shelter. Oh my gosh, that's kind of cool. As well as being able to absorb a direct also nuclear weird. strike, engineers have constructed the Mary Haka shelter to withstand the aftermath of an attack as well. Radiation mm. comes in two forms, straight radiation and fallout radiation. So we can filter out the fallout with the ventilation system on, on filters, but mm. the straight radiation is uh, absorbed to the uh, bedrock. If we know there is possible of contamination uh, on, on the city, uh, we need to con decontaminate contaminated persons that are coming inside of the shelter mm. uh, with Good water call. And, and brushes and, and soap. One thing that can't be planned for is the psychological stress of locking 6,000 frightened people underground True. for an indeterminate period. The most common thing for everyone inside of the shelter is the fear. And the fear is universal. It doesn't divide us by uh, color of our skin or, or uh, by our religion or, or by, our, by the way we talk or, or that. I wonder how long it actually took to, to make these caves or these, these tunnel systems. Because I remember watching, I did a reaction to the tunnel systems 
but I don't recall when they were actually built or how long it actually took because it seems like it was definitely a doozy. I'm sure it wasn't all done at the same time, but at least like this main sort of Helsinki compound. Language, uh, it is universal and, and it, it's, it is joint. Uh, the fear unites us. Hmm. It's like morbid, but bunkers, true. The will to survive is something deep and unshakable that holds Finnish society together. This instinct can be encapsulated by a word that has no literal translation in hmm. English. Sisu. Ah, no. Hell yeah. It's kind of combination of grit, perseverance, and stubbornness. Can you put those <laughs> in, a, in a bag and mix it? And I think that's the nice. closest where you can get with Sisu. It's a great word. It's not about war and battle, this same Sisu. It's, it's about living in Finland, hard winters, uh, lots of uh, suffering in the Finnish history, and the whole nation has held it together. And, and maybe that's sort of, maybe Sisu is the explanation for that. I think Sisu means that in a, in a wartime situation, we would fight like hell, because <laughs> we know that we are fighting for our homes and our loved ones and we are fighting for a good cause, for, for the right cause. And during peace time, we keep calm and, and just go on. Hey, go Seagull. Near. We don't get nervous. <laughs> we don't panic at all. We try to adapt. That's Sisu for me in a nutshell. Guts, so to speak. Hmm. Not giving up no matter how bad it's going, you know. It, it could be going all wrong, but... <laughs> You're just gonna push through because you have the will. It's the will to try no matter what. Perseverance. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, some kind of courage, some kind of of uh, uh, keeping your own head, um, standing your ground. All right, that video is exactly what I expected. It was awesome. And I can imagine like as a conscript or someone who's about to go into this con the conscription, this video is going to be pretty freaking hype. Even just living in Finland, like you can get a really good sort of pride in in what your country is doing and how the people are responding and how they're taking everything. Cause it's easy for a lot of people out there to see what's going on in Ukraine and think, you know, there's there's no hope in the world for, you know, what's what's going on but the world has definitely responded and it's awesome to see how the Finnish people are responding and yeah you can tell they're taking it very very seriously they're having that that sort of sisu mentality and they're not sort of backing down from this threat that is obviously there and that's obviously facing the world so pretty freaking awesome video and again it is kind of cool to see some familiar faces as well sort of explaining and talking about everything but of course let me know what you guys think i know this video is a little bit longer but i really wanted to check it out and yeah if you guys haven't seen it then yeah i'm sure you will agree it was a really freaking solid video i don't really know too much about the sun i don't know how many videos i've actually watched from their channel but this was really, really well done. So, of course, I'll put the original video in the description if you guys want to go and check it out and watch it again for yourself. But yeah, it was it was solid, and it's just cool to sort of get into the mindset of the Finnish people. But of course, if you guys have anything to add, your own sort of personal thoughts or experiences, let me know down in the comment section. But yeah, this was this was a great video. Thank you guys for recommending it. I have a lot of cool reaction videos that I want to do, especially for that the Amos uh, mortar system. Yeah, I definitely want to do a reaction to that. But yeah, stay tuned. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys liked the video, of course, hit that thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think, and definitely consider subscribing. But that is it for this video. I will see y'all in the next one.